Hi everyone. Today I'm excited to talk about the new top-level deployment status dashboard that's a part of version 6 of the Remote Desktop Commander suite. If you have a full RDS deployment featuring gateways and or connection brokers, or if you also license Remote Desktop Canary from us, you'll definitely want to learn more about this dashboard and how to set it up. The first thing that you need to do after installing or upgrading to version 6 or later of the Remote Desktop Commander suite is to make sure to add all of your Remote Desktop Gateway servers and Remote Desktop Connection Brokers to the Remote Desktop Commander configuration tool. Basically, you need to tell Remote Desktop Commander explicitly what roles these servers hold. If you've recently upgraded from a previous version and had already been monitoring your connection brokers, remove them and add them back, taking special care to designate them now as having the connection broker role. Once you've made sure your RDS infrastructure roles have been added, you can launch the Remote Desktop Commander client to get to the top-level deployment status dashboard. You may want to give things a few minutes so the Remote Desktop Reporter service can start collecting relevant data from these role servers. You can access this dashboard from the Reports and Dashboards menu, and you can also make it load automatically when the Remote Desktop Commander client starts up by adjusting that preference accordingly from the File menu. And there it is, the top-level deployment status dashboard. Isn't it beautiful? From a single screen, you can observe your remote desktop canary login test information, plus gateway broker and aggregated RDS collection statistics. It's a bird's eye view of the present health of your environment in one consolidated view. Even better, it's fully interactive. You can click on different items to bring up related reporting and sub dashboards to drill down into developing issues with just a few mouse clicks. For instance, I can double click on a remote desktop canary logon test and build a report based on a four hour look back. From there, I can see visually in a graph how my login tests have been performing and see if user logins were slower at different times of the day. Similarly, I'm just a click away from reviewing current or historic performance on my gateway servers, including a comprehensive minute-by-minute -minute health and load performance report. You can also pull up the same sort of health and load metrics on your connection brokers as well, including connection broker specific performance counters like SQL database response times, stored procedure success rates, and connection broker success rates. If the sparkline graphs are indicating that trouble is brewing, you can quickly RDP into that infrastructure server to take a closer look and begin remediating the problem. And let's not forget to talk about how the top-level deployment status dashboard monitors your session collections. Especially useful in large RDS deployments, 
The top level deployment dashboard shows you key averages for all of the hosts in an RDS collection or a manual grouping of hosts. Statistics like average memory per host, average CPU usage per host, total remote session count across all hosts, average sessions per host, average user network latency per host, and average user input delay are all represented per collection. Clicking on these items gives you access to management and analysis functions for those collections. Clicking on a session host collection provides you with a menu of actions, including a link to start actively managing the sessions in that collection, as well as access to sub-dashboards to track current and historic performance of servers in the collection. Thus, the ability to analyze performance all the way down to the user and process level is only a couple of mouse clicks away. Finally, you can also quickly access reporting related to user experience in specific session collections, such as average network latency per user and average user input delay per user.